Um, I'm glad to be here. Before I actually got, got started with the talk, I wanted to thank uh, the speakers who are going to be here uh, speaking today, especially uh, the ones who have traveled um, and, and have made time out of their schedule to come. Um, I wanted to uh, thank John, who just spoke to you. Uh, John is actually the guy who got me started blogging. And that was really the genesis of much of my career for the last decade. And so I, I owe John quite a bit. Uh, that, it's a funny story how I started blogging because of John. And Steve, who's going to speak to us later, Steve Gilmore uh, and John were both at InfoWorld when I started writing for them. And they both have been uh, friends and advisors and uh, mentors. And I'm, I'm grateful that they would come. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today about programming the Internet. There's a few things in this talk that I gave in my last talk. They're kind of introductory, and so I thought it'd be appropriate to, to repeat them. But there's also a lot of new stuff, and so I'm hoping that, uh, that what I say today will, will help you understand a little bit of the direction where we're trying to go. So um, imagine that you walk into borders. This is the example that Steve gave a little while ago. So you walk into borders, and when you walk into borders, um, your digital device, your, whatever you've got, your iPhone or your Android phone or whatever, alerts you that you have a book available in Borders that's one you put on your Amazon wish list earlier that day. So how does that work? We're linking something you did on the web with notifications that are happening in your phone. Now, if you're a programmer, you can probably think of a hundred different ways you could do that, right? Um, and some of them would be hard, and some of them would be easy. What I'm going to show you a little bit is about our vision of how that can happen. So I think of that as a scenario. And scenarios right, can be described with, with ex event expressions, as we call them. And I'm going to show you a lot of event expressions today and talk about them. So here is kind of a pseudocode version of the scenario that I just described. So when there's a new book on my wish list and I go to visit Borders, right? So when that happens before I go to visit Borders, then do something. Send a notification that the book's available in Borders if it is. Right? So, so that's an example of how we can use an event expression to describe a scenario which might be something that somebody cares about. Now, traditionally, this has been pretty hard. Um, I'm going to show you a little video here. We have sound? Anybody remember this? Where do you want to go today? So this is actually the intro, the intro video that came on the Windows 98 CD. Right? But the theme that Microsoft had been pushing, it was actually their first public um, kind of general feel good about Microsoft ad campaign was where do you want to go today? And part of that was inspired by the internet. And that is, I think, one of the reasons why doing what we want to do is hard. And that's because everything on the internet has been thought of as a location. That's the metaphor we use to describe things. We talk about web addresses, to go, to websites. Our whole language around the web is in this location metaphor. And that makes it really hard because people don't generally want to go somewhere. What people want to do is get something done, right? So Microsoft is, is a great commercial. And for the time, it was, it, was a, it was a nice play on what people were thinking about with the web. But in fact, people don't want to go anywhere. Right? What they want to do is get something done. They don't want to go places. Um, and I think that this location metaphor has actually led to some problems. It's led us to a focus on servers. And that focus on servers has actually led us to create a bunch of silos, where we think of these websites 
as places, right, as property that we own and that we control. But the problem with silos is it's really hard to connect them together. It's really hard to get data out of one, to work with data on another. And when you can, where are you going to do it? Are you going to do it on another server? Well, I don't know. So here's another little video, which some of you saw last time, but... Uh, I find business opportunities everywhere, man. Yeah, I'm constantly bombarded with ideas, like they're falling out of those holes in the ozone layer right into my brain. <laughs> Just the other day, I realized that that AAA membership that my step-grandmother's boyfriend keeps buying me for my birthday... Uh, wait, what? It's got discounts in it all over the place. I can actually use them for all sorts of local businesses, and I actually went through and found each local business that offers discounts. Sweet. Check it. I'm with you. And you know where I'm going with this. Awesome website. Discount spreadsheets. Wait, I'll what? email them to you monthly for 20 bucks. Really? You'd be stupid not to do it. Wow. Hey, look. Yeah, I guess I'm stupid. I got one right here. You can buy three tires for 120 bucks. Four tire, it doesn't say. Of course not. Candelabras for $15. Ooh, do they have I've cakes got too? Manny Petties for under 20 bucks. You know how I like to take care of myself? Yeah, you could use some it's hair amazing. removal. I mean, it took me a while to tab it up, but I could probably get my cousins to do that for me. I mean, I did it while I was on the clock anyway, so no harm, no foul. So, you got this thing, right? You've got this book. And it's all tabbed up. Now, what, what was, um, I, I don't know his name, not Simon, the other guy. Jeff, does he have a name? Andrew. What was Andrew's idea? Discount spreadsheets that he's going to email to you. What does Simon say? Websites. Now, in fact, that's funny because most people think websites is the right thing. But in fact, I would maintain that it might actually be better for you if somebody did email you discount spreadsheets. Because right? there are lots of things you could do with a spreadsheet that you can't do with a website if somebody just throws it up in HTML. It's more structured when it's in a spreadsheet, for example. So it may be that Andrew's idea wasn't so bad after all, and that we really ought to be looking at discount spreadsheets or something equivalent. So the answer, I think, is that there's more to the Internet than just servers. In fact, there's a bunch of different clients. And those clients are where all of the things that you care about come together. Right? There's no server, unless it happens to be your server and you control it and are programming it. There's no server that pulls everything you care about together, but your browser does. And the browser, because it's sitting looking at all of these silos, has the opportunity to tie them together and put a bridge across those silos so that you can connect them together and make sense out of them. Now, this is the place where I'm going to do a live demo just because I'm a masochist. All right, so what we're going to do, and, and this is actually, um, when, when John was talking, he talked about how he um, did this library thing. Uh, in some ways, this demo is inspired by, by John's library lookup project, although Azigo, this is actually a, a live um, uh, project for you. Is it still live, Tom? Yeah, uh, and, and my, I'm not going to show you the actual Azigo code. I'm going to show you some sample code I wrote to demo how it would work, but... Um, Let's suppose that you are over here on Amazon and you look up this book, right, JavaScript, the Rhino book. And now you want to know something about it. In fact, you want to know, is this available in my local library? Well, if you weren't smart enough to install John's bookmark, then what you'd do is you'd go over to um, the Minuteman Library Network. And once you found the Minuteman Library Network, you would... Um, Search the Minuteman catalog. You're all still tracking, right? Um, and we'd search for JavaScript and submit that. And then once we did that, we'd start looking at this. Okay, which of these books is the book I was looking at over on Amazon? Well, I don't know. Well, fortunately, they have some pictures, but... None of these are the book I was looking at. I'll go to the second page. It's really hard, right, to figure out which one you want. But now suppose instead that what we'd done was installed this little library lookup um, application and reissued this search. 